thanks again for this uh, 10 to 15 minutes space. Uh, I'm Alessandro, I'm working for Extron Electronics. Uh, and uh, uh, yeah, I'm going to talk today about the company, the products, and quickly some updates about our SP series that is, uh, I think, widely used around uh, uh, your community. Uh, so, for those of you that do not know us, Exxon is a large company that manufactures audio and video devices. We have more than almost 5,000 products nowadays within our catalog, from cables up to the most complex matrix switcher, and of course, streaming media processors and recorded. Several engineers working uh, across the world and several patents. We are well known on the market for our commitment to support. The support is part uh, of uh, our philosophy, and the support is not just uh, on the post sales side if you are running into issues, but also on the pre sales side if you just need some help in understanding what product is right for your application and use case or what kind of workflow you will need to adopt to achieve uh, what you need to achieve. Uh, we can support you from multiple locations in the world. We have a global presence. I'm based in Italy personally, but uh, yeah, our headquarters is here in the Netherlands and taking care of Europe, Middle East and Africa. So. Uh, among our 5,000 products, we have a range of products that are streaming media encoders and streaming media processors that work in combination with OpenCast. My main focus will be on the two devices you see here on the right, so SMP3 and the series. So what you should expect from a streaming media processor, of course, capabilities for live streaming using industry standard protocols and recording on uh, uh, MP4 format. Um, these are the products in the lineup. As I said, I'm going to focus mostly on the SMP series, so the devices that can stream and record simultaneously. We have SMP 111 that can stream and record at the same time the signal coming from a single HDMI input. We have SMP 351 here that can stream and record at the same time two signal and combining these two signal into a single canvas for streaming and recording two simultaneous stream at the same time to two different destinations using different protocols. And we have our SMP 352 range that allows you to record and stream at the same time the signal coming from two separate HDMI input into two separate files and two separate streams. This is, I think, is the most popular device uh, uh, across uh, OpenCast users. Uh, one of the advantages of our SMPs is that these are completely agnostic in terms of what type of signal you want to input on the system and what type of system you want to control. Uh, sorry, what type of control system you are going to use. You can automate everything using scheduling. We do support, of course, OpenCast scheduling and other video content management system on top of iCalendar. We do support control using button panel, so you can physically connect a physical button panel to our unit. It can be integrated with the touch panel or a control system, not just Extron. We do provide a full set of commands to control uh, our SMP using Extron and other brands. It can be controlled using digital input and output from its web user interface. And you can also constantly monitor the audio and the video preview of what you are streaming and recording. Uh, from a scheduling perspective, as I say, we do support scheduling uh, using OpenCast as any other capture agent. So you can register the SMP to work in combination with OpenCast using HTTP or HTTPS, and you can schedule through OpenCast your event on the SMP. If you have a different scheduling system that can produce, for example, standard ICS file, so iCalendar, you can also use that as scheduling source on top of systems like Office 365, Google Calendar, and so on. The scheduling features and all the OpenCast integration comes for free. It's included, so it does not require any link license. Link license is needed for uh, other video content management systems. Uh, publishing, same. We can publish, of course, our content together with a set of metadata to OpenCast, but we can also publish to uh, network location or network storages using FTP, uh, SMB, and other standard protocols. Uh, this was just a very quick overview about the SMP. I think that for those of you that are already using SMP uh, 300 series, probably the most important thing I'm going to present today is related to the new firmware available and to the open custom Flex OS app, which is finally available on our website. So you probably know this again for SMP users that uh, uh, up to a couple of months ago, you were forced to use a two dot something firmware in combination with the SMP in order to be able to upload to OpenCast. 
Then we decided to migrate all of our publishing and scheduling integration, starting from iCalendar up to Opencast and other video content management system to an open and uh, FlexOS approach, meaning that you will need to load a small piece of software, a small app on top of your firmware, on top of your SMP firmware in order to be able to schedule and offload, upload contents to Opencast. This is now available for free on our website. Uh, what's new compared to the standard feature set that you probably were using on the firmware 2.14 or 16 on the, on the Opencast FlexOS app? So this is the first release. We are going to develop more features in the future. And for this release, the 1.0.0, we have additional metadata mapping. So finally, the series and the source metadata field are mapped into Opencast from the SMP to Opencast. So if you start a doc recording using a control system or using the web UI of the SMP, you will be able to leverage these two metadata in order to probably deliver the content to the right uh, uh, course. Uh, we have updated something related to the validation of the catalog fields. Probably some of you remember that uh, uh, I think Opencast has been patched for this. Anyway, we were uh, uploading the catalog uh, uh, in a kind of illegal format, uh, and Opencast, starting from 9.7 and 10, started to um, check this format and was basically uh, uh, disregarding the, the, the file up, up, the update uploaded by the SMP. Uh, yeah, we just uh, corrected this now, so we are fully compliant with the latest versions of Opencast. Uh, other new feature. Basically, when you schedule an event, you have now the option to mute channels or select channels. So if you have an SMP 352 and you have channel A presenter and channel B presentation, you will be able during the scheduling phase through Opencast to mute or unmute a channel. For example, you have a teacher or a lecturer that doesn't want to be recorded. You can provision this during uh, uh, the scheduling phase. Uh, last but not least, uh, that does, uh, there was some issue with uh, um, within the communication between the SMP and Opencast sometimes. And uh, yeah, there were uh, SMP reporting HTTP post failed errors in the log. At some point, the log was flawed and the unit was uh, not responding properly. This has been corrected within this latest uh, Opencast FlexOS version. On top of the Opencast FlexOS version, FlexOS app, uh, there are several advantages related to the firmware 3.x instead of the 2.x. The latest version is 3.04. So the new firmware integrates with Toolbelt, which means that Toolbelt is a software that you can download for free from our website and allows you to upload the firmware and update the firmware on your units to multiple units simultaneously. You don't have to do it box by box. You can do up to 10 units simultaneously. And Toolbelt also allows you to enter credential or upload certificates in case you want to leverage HR2.1X, so the port-based network access control. If the network of your uh, university is enforcing uh, uh, this security policy, you can now do this. We have also auto reconnection for RTMP stream. Previously, if there was a disconnection during an RTMP live streaming session, the SMP was just giving up. Now the SMP will retry to connect. Uh, we have file transfer scheduled, meaning that you can schedule the offload of contents from the SMP to Opencast, for example, outside business hours. <clears throat> we have an improved SFTP transfer speed. And I think this is an interesting one for those of you using the latest version with Wowza. We have more control. Uh, Granularly on the IDR interval uh, for the live streaming. This is quite important because there were some problems uh, uh, in combination with the latest version of Wowza and the HLS slicer on the previous firmware release. Uh, we have also publish failure alarm. So if the publishing from the SMP to Opencast is failing, you can have this reported on a control system or you can have the unit sending an email to your system administration. And if you have specific retention policy, for example, you don't want to keep contents on the hard drive of your unit, you can delete folder and contents after a successful upload. Uh, last but not least, the firmware 304 introduced also virtual inputs. What are virtual inputs? The virtual inputs are two extra inputs uh, that may come from IP cameras, for example, or from other units uh, capable of streaming using RTP or RTSP. So with this virtual input feature that comes for free within the firmware, so no licensing involved, if you have an SMP 351 on top of the combination of the two HDMI signal, you can record and restream up to two separate virtual input. 
and using the dual mode, so SMP352 or SMP351 with the dual recording link license, you will be able to record the two separate signal record and restream, the two separate signal coming from the HDMI inputs and two separate uh, virtual inputs coming from cameras. This is uh, the type of workflow, for example, you have the two HDMI input here and you have the two extra RTSP in this case sources, so two IP cameras. We are also looking into NDI for this. Um, yeah, it's more or less done. What's next is not something I want to put on paper, but it's something that I want to discuss with you and inform you. So Exxon is looking also in uh, new hardware with 4K capabilities. Uh, of course, this is going to be a little bit delayed due to the uh, component shortage crisis that we are all facing at this stage, but it's of course on our radar. Other things that are on our radar now, we have uh, <clears throat> multiple requests for the integration between uh, the recording and the live streaming. So basically during the scheduling phase, the SMP need to be able to retrieve a stream key in case you are also using live streaming. And last but not least, the virtual input I just introduced to you now are not uh, yet uh, compatible with OpenCast, meaning that these two virtual input recorded will not be uploaded into OpenCast. But we are definitely really looking into this for the upcoming uh, OpenCast Flexo S app. For those of you that are in touch uh, with me, uh, probably know that uh, uh, my email box is always open and I'm always uh, glad and happy to receive suggestion for product features. So most of the features within our products are dictated by requests coming from you coming from the market, coming from the field. So uh, feel free to write me or write to your local extra representative uh, in case you have a, a request for support or especially suggestion for product improvements. That's all from my side. I'm going to check the shared notes if there is, yeah. So uh, I still have two minutes, so I try to answer some question now, and then I will write down in the shared notes. 4K coming, yes, it's coming, just delayed because of the component shortage crisis. We don't want to announce a product if we are not able to deliver the product, of course. Uh, OpenCast event ID or series ID in the live stream URL, that's the other thing that is on our radar for the upcoming uh, OpenCast FlexOS app. Live streaming only activated in OpenCast and not for every recording. Uh, we need to, I think we need to find a workaround for this. I will think about it and uh, answer you in the shared notes. Official release note for the OpenCast app. Yes, these are available on the website and can be downloaded for free. Would it be possible to control this SMP layout preset via OpenCast? Plus one, so two asking for this. Uh, we have the ability through iCalendar to do this. Perhaps we can look uh, together if there is the way to do it from an OpenCast side as well. But if you use standard iCalendar, we have a, a custom iCalendar key that allows you to trigger different layouts. Uh, TLS1213 also coming, uh, it's not there. Uh, I will need to check with our product development. Uh, official release for the OpenCast app, it is officially released. Is Ansible support plan to manage the unit? Uh, not at this stage, but I will uh, uh, report this to product development. Uh, Virtual input limited to full HD. Yes, they are. 4K coming when? I hope sooner than later, but I can't commit on a date. Sorry about that. Okay, thank you, Alessandro. Um, thank you, Rudiger, and thank you all for the time. And I made Paul already the presenter, and uh, I'm glad that you managed to answer the question. That it would be good if you also could write it down as we send this as a... Um, a report of the date to the mailing list later on.